So we're looking at Lockhorn shafts right now. Lockhorn shafts come in a lot of different varieties. There's multi-bladder, there's lug, there's button, there's leaf. This particular type is leaf shaft. So this is a leaf lock core air shaft. You simply slide the cores on and then inflate it. This one happens to be under the guard inflation automatic, but it does a nice job for thin cores and it really inflates concentrically so they don't star out. They actually open up very nice and even and it's great. For this particular application, the material doesn't have a lot of caliper. There's not a big buildup ratio. We're making narrow-ish cuts, like in the one inch range here. And it's doing a really nice job with these leaf shafts. So that's just an example of lock core slitting with leaf shafts. So lock core gets done in a number of different style shafts. Here's a multi-bladder shaft in a set of safety chucks, lock core winding. Now we're only doing one cut, so we're not really worried about caliper between slit lanes because there's only one slit here. Certain products we actually could do slitting on here and have good results, but others with slight caliper and bigger diameters, it's going to multiply out. So the example that you're seeing here of lock core slitting is perfect. And this is a multi-bladder shaft, so it's, it's lightweight, it's easy to maintain, and it's doing a great job. So here we're looking at a lock core rewind. We're actually stripping a liner off of this product. So it's casted onto the liner stripped. The other part of the material is going through here and being slit narrow web. It's got a lay on roll. We're making rolls that are big in diameter, but we're making one roll. It's really, we're not slitting or anything. So a good lock core shaft is perfect for this example. As you can see, it's, it's doing a good job in the wind. So direct friction style differential shafts are used in applications like you see here. This is a project where we're running two inch wide tape product, linered, but we wanna be able to get the cores on. We wanna be able to get them on quickly and accurately. So this particular video, picture rather, is showing a core strip. And this core strip is precisely machined so that it's got a two inch increment. They simply slide in, slide out. So if you're changing sizes, you can um, get to different sizes quickly. So people typically have a pin rack and they have all their common jobs, one inch, two inch, three inch in this customer's case. And it allows you to put it in there and get your course accurately set up across the shaft without spacers, without accumulated tolerances and done nicely. The fact that the direct friction means that the spinning is actually occurring on the body and we're using a segment here that we're varying the air pressure to to control the torque. We also have other modes that we use and we use them regularly. And so we're program specialized method for doing a mixed mode style tension control, which we find we use most often with this particular shaft and gives us great results. We're accustomed to do narrow cutting on here. When I say narrow, I mean we half inch, one inch, two inch. You can do wider, but it really runs nicely with those narrow cuts. And running it in this configuration with the strips makes it very nice and easy to get your core set up, particularly on this machine because it's on a turret. So while it's on running in the background there behind the guard, you can strip the rolls, put the cores on quickly and easily to the locations and it has independent air in our spindles. We have two air systems, so we can raise and lower those independent of the pushing segments. I've got a video teed up here, which really shows you what it looks like on a slitter. So we're doing, looks like one inch cuts, score slitting, running it on one of our Capridge 729s. There's the strips there. So the cores are set. We're winding up this product. You can see it's winding. You can see those segments that are there for the cores. Going to be hard to see if there's any slip going on. That's what a direct friction rewind shaft looks like. When you're comparing a direct friction style differential to a cam lock style, there, there's some real big differences to them. Let me go through some advantages and disadvantages. On a direct friction shaft, you can use these strips, which make it easier to set up. It's running in a situation where it does a very nice job, particularly with our mixed mode programming for doing narrow cuts, big diameters, and getting really clean looking edge profiles. One thing about them though, they're not as pure as a differential as a cam lock. You have to be really careful how much caliper variation there is, what the products you're running in there. And if you're not quite sure, you should talk it through with somebody who has experience because they have pros and cons and you just don't want to pick the wrong shaft for your application. They definitely have higher weight capacities um, and they're usually used in this differential state for products that have medium to high tensions. So that's typically where you're going to see these. You don't see them pulling very thin films or something that's super gaugey. It just doesn't have the same finesse as a cam lock style differential. But 
when it comes to the edge profile programmed correctly, you can get some really nice results. And again, on our this particular machine, we could switch between lock core differential and these direct friction differentials at any time. And like I said, there's never the one shaft that does all for customers. So we have the ability to mix and match. We stock all these types of shafts so we can easily get you configured one way or the other. But when you look at some of these results and how clean that is, you're really seeing some good advantages and the uh, capabilities of a direct friction differential. Now, when it comes to cam lock shafts, they're pure. You can run quite a range of products on these cam lock differentials and get good results. You're going to find film, paper, lots of different things. You have to be careful with these shafts though. They're built typically on a 60 millimeter base for the three inch diameter shaft, the most common one. And as the machine web widths get wider and wider, they tend to deflect more as the diameters get bigger or the rolls get heavier. So if you're pushing a 62 inch machine, 32 inch diameter you probably won't run into any issues when you get into 72 or even wider you may need center supports you're gonna have to watch shaft deflection sometimes people confuse what's happening when they're running because it looks like caliper but it's really shaft deflection causing issues with these shafts well if you keep them in the right range perfect if you have a center support and you get farther heavier rolls like a metalized something or a metalized product or a wider machine and you have center supports you wouldn't notice this type of thing but you'll, you'll find that these cam lock differentials work well for jobs like this where the cuts are typically about three inches or wider can you go narrower absolutely you just have to make sure you have the right rings and the right setup but typically you're going to find cut sizes like this where you're doing eight cuts ten cuts maybe a little more maybe a little less but nothing super narrow on them that's not a common situation and if you are, it's difficult to get the course positioned accurately and squarely. And if you're winding bigger diameter rolls, you may not see the edge profile that you're looking for. So it's always important to talk to somebody who has experience with these types of shafts. And as I mentioned before at Catbridge, we have a lab. If there's any question what's going to work for your product, we tend to, to prove our process in the lab and or any machine that's in the testing phase on the floor prior to build.